Hey there, whether you've got the RS4 Mini Combo Kit or the Standard Kit, this video will help you get set up super quickly. The first thing you want to do, which is going to make the whole process easier, is to go and fit the little handle. Go and grab your RS4 Mini, grab the tripod, and then screw it into the base, making sure it's nice and firm. Expand the legs and put it on the desk in front of you. Next thing you're going to want to do is grab the charging cable, and you want to attach this to the USB-C port. To find out how much charge you've currently got, just quickly tap the power button, and then the screen will light up. We've got 29%. Before we attach the camera, we're going to go and activate the gimbal and also check that there's no firmware updates. Before you power this thing on for the first time, you're going to want to make sure you remove this bit of packaging. Press and hold the power button to power on the gimbal, and then go and select your language. Tap next. You can use this gimbal five times before you have to activate it. And to activate it, you need to use the Ronin app. Make sure Bluetooth is turned on on your phone and then launch the Ronin app. You'll need to go and log in with a DJI account. Choose the type of gimbal you want to connect to, in this case, DJI RS4 Mini, and then tap connect. The RS4 Mini should show up. Tap that to connect to it. You can verify that we're connecting to the correct device. You can see this number on the RS4 Mini screen, and this is the same number that's on this phone and then tap pair and tap connect on the gimbal. The default password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hit connect. And right away we can see that we've got this update available. So we'll tap update now and make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi or mobile data to do this. You can see a list of all of the new things and the screen on the gimbal will also tell you that it's updating the firmware. And while that's updating, we'll carry on with the rest of the setup. You're gonna to wanna to grab this plate from the box. This is gonna to attach to the camera and also grab this screw. This plate has a super nice feature where you can extend this thing in and out. And this thing is going to clamp or support the front of the camera. And that's gonna stop this plate from wobbling around and moving on the camera, which can result in jerky footage. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hold this plate over the camera's mounting point and see that there. Then I'm going to push this till it touches the front of the camera and holding that in place, I'm gonna screw in this screw and make sure that's nice and firm. This plate shouldn't be able to rotate left and right if you've set this up correctly. Looks like the firmware update is 88% complete, which is awesome because the next step is to go and attach the camera and get the gimbal balanced. You do wanna make sure that whatever package you're putting to the gimbal, so that includes the camera, the lens, any accessories like a microphone adapter, memory card, battery, you wanna make sure that the combination of the weight of all of those things is within the operating weight of this gimbal. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that no part of your camera or lens or accessories will hit any part of the gimbal when it's moving around. Looks like the firmware update is complete. I'm gonna tap OK, and now we can agree and activate this gimbal. You can see here, I've got to log in with my DJI account, so I'll go and do that. Okay, activation is complete. The screen here is telling us that the firmware update was complete. You can also go and optionally add the DJI Care refresh. I'm not gonna do that now, so I'm gonna tap skip at the top right. I'm gonna be doing a dedicated video on how to use the Ronin app with this gimbal, so subscribe if that's something you're interested in. Now we can go and mount the camera. You're gonna to wanna to make sure the gimbal is turned off for this, so I'm just gonna hold in power button until it powers down. We're gonna start off with this axis locked. So I'm gonna hit that and just give it a gentle wiggle till it locks into place. Next thing we're gonna do is attach this lower quick release plate onto the gimbal and then the camera with the other release plate will attach here. You can see we've got these teeth underneath and these line up to this cog here. You wanna slide it in this way and push it back. And once you've slid that in, you can go and lock this lever. And that's gonna lock this plate in place. Now we've got the plate on the camera and the plate on the gimbal, we can connect the two together. At the end of this lower quick release plate, you need to change this to the unlocked position to allow the camera to slide in. To make this bit so much easier, you can bring these up and lock these two arms just so things aren't swinging about all over the place. Okay, grab your camera. You're going to want to slide this quick release plate so the back of the camera lines up to the back of the lever on the back of the quick release plate. Line it up, slide it in, you can hear a click, and when it's in position, lock this lever back to the lock position, and that will lock this camera 
into the lower quick release plate. Double check that it's nice and secure on that plate. So now the camera is attached to the gimbal, we need to balance the gimbal against the weight of the camera and the lens and any accessories. We have to do this because we want the motors to be running as efficiently as possible so we get as smooth as possible footage. We also don't want the motors to be using more battery power than they need to. That will extend the battery in the gimbal and allow us to use it more. We also don't want the motors overheating and the gimbal shutting down. Let me take you through the balancing process. At the minute all of these axes are locked and we're going to start off with a sequence that you want to follow when you balance this gimbal. The first axis we're going to balance is the tilt axis. You want to unlock this and just keep a handle on the camera so it doesn't fling around and damage itself. You can see now that this moves up and down. What we're aiming for here is that with this tilt axis unlocked the camera just hangs out, chills out and just points upwards without falling forwards or falling backwards or being top or bottom heavy. You can see at the minute it's wobbling and pointing to the front so we need to make an adjustment. What we're going to do is we're going to unlock this and we're going to move this whole thing up and down this part of the gimbal and this is going to allow us to balance the first part of the tilt axis. So I'm going to make sure I'm supporting the camera. I'm going to unlock this lever and now I can move this whole thing up and down. If I move it too far this way, the camera's going to fall too far that way. And if I push this thing too far to the bottom, the camera's going to tip too far forwards. So it's just a question of sliding this thing around till you find that sweet spot. And now you can see that the camera is almost pointing straight up. So we have a tiny bit of an adjustment to make. And to help you out, this bar has some numbers on it just to take out a bit of the guesswork. Okay. Once the camera is pointing straight up and it's not wobbling to the front or the back, you can go and lock this lever. The second part of balancing the tilt axis is to point the camera forward and then check if it falls backwards or forwards. You can see at the minute, if I try and point this camera forwards, it's folding back on itself that way. To fix that, we can adjust where this bottom quick release plate is sitting. This is super easy because we've got that little dial on the quick release plate. Unlock this lever and now you can twist this dial forwards and backwards to get the camera balanced. If it's falling too far backwards then you're going to want to move the camera forwards and if the camera is tilting too far forwards you're going to want to twist this and move the camera back that way. And Once you've found that sweet spot make sure you lock this lever again. Now the camera should be able to sit vertically straight up like that without flopping forwards or backwards and it should be able to sit front and back without tipping down and up. And as a final check you should be able to point the camera 45 degrees up or 45 degrees down without it flopping forwards and backwards and you can see this is pretty good. Let's move on to the next axis. You're going to want to lock this tilt axis because we've finished balancing that and now this is locked in place and I can't move it. So the next axis is this roll axis. This is this one at the back here. I'm going to do, I'll just turn you to face the camera. You're going to want to unlock this but you're also going to want to make sure that you're holding onto the arm and the camera just so it doesn't fall down. So go and unlock that and you can see that the camera's rotating downwards that way and to fix this we move this arm left or right until the camera stays level. To actually move this arm you can unlock this lever here and then move this forwards and backwards. If I move it too far this way the camera's now flopping down that side and if I move this arm too far the other way it's moving too far that way. So you just want to get this arm in the right place so the camera stays level pointing straight ahead. Once you've done that lock the adjustment arm and then lock that axis. The final axis we need to balance is the pan axis and this is the one that connects onto the gimbal handle. We're going to unlock the pan axis by clicking this button and you can see that it rotates around now. To balance this we need to unlock this lever and push this arm forwards this way or backwards this way to get the thing balanced. To do this I'm going to hold the bottom and I'm going to tilt the gimbal forwards. You can see that swinging around there. I'm going to bring this arm parallel to me and then I'm going to slide this one forwards making sure I've unlocked that front arm so it will actually slide. You can see it's falling to the front so I need to pull it back a bit, back a bit more, tiny bit more forwards. 
You can see now it's staying in place even though I've got the gimbal tilted forwards and away from me. Once you've got it in place, lock the adjustment lever. Now if you unlock all of the other axes again, you should be able to point this gimbal more or less wherever you want and it should stay roughly in place. The last step of the balancing process is to run something called auto-tune. This is where the gimbal checks the balancing and it also adjusts the stiffness of the motors in the gimbal to get the best possible result. So we've got all of these arms unlocked at the minute. I'm going to power on the gimbal by holding down that power button. And now we can go and perform the auto-tune process. To start the auto-tune process, what you need to do is hold in the M button, which is on the controller here. You want to hold that in at the same time as holding in the front trigger button. And when I do this, it's going to make some strange noises. We see we've got the calibration percentage on the screen there. And you can see this gimbal's wobbling about all over the place, so it looks a bit strange. You want to make sure that you do this on a solid flat surface, and also you don't want to move the gimbal around while this auto-tune calibration is happening. You can hear some strange noises there, that's fine. And now it says gimbal calibration is complete. Just tap confirm. If you swipe up from the bottom and you can see that we've got this little green symbol here and that's green, that's good. That tells us that this gimbal has been successfully balanced. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is connect your camera to the gimbal so you can control it using the physical buttons on the gimbal. And that's what you'll learn about if you watch this video next. I'm Jason Roberts, please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.